Okay. Should be it. Competitive? Why did, why did it switch me to competitive? Weird. an idea factory game. I said that I had one. I didn't say that we were playing an idea factory game, Yuki. Listen to me. Uh, this is a game that I have never beaten. Even though I played it a lot as a kid. I've never beaten it because um, I just got stuck at some point because I was a kid. However, uh, you might have noticed at the top of the screen when I opened up, this game, uh, I modded the game. It's a little bit different than normal. The change is not that big, but it's, um... It's Final Fantasy X2 HD Remaster. We played through the remaster of Final Fantasy X. I realized that I didn't actually like the game as much as I did back in the day. There's a lot of things about that game I just don't really like. Nude mods? <laughs> um, I think you can actually see the mod that I have, so let's talk about the mod. How do I open it? Control shift backspace? There you go. Oh yeah, you can see it. So, right away you'll see that the, my language is set to Japanese. This is a mod called Untitled Project X. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. Um, it's mainly just trying to make the game a little bit better. So, for example, if you want, you can play with the uh, Japanese audio and sound effects and also full motion video. So we can hear some of the Japanese singing instead of the English singing. It's kind of cool, something you could do. Um, I don't know what this stuff is. Is it this one? This is my favorite part. I... Yeah, it's, it's like general tweaks. So for example, I use a PlayStation controller. I played this game back on the PS2. It might have been a PS2 exclusive. I don't even know if it was on Xbox. But I can put Sony buttons. So now I don't get confused when they tell me press A. And I'm like, wait, what's A? You can also have like the PS3 buttons if you want, the uh, PS4 buttons too. You no, know, just general things like that. Um, this doesn't seem to work, the frame rate thing. It says frame rate limit 60 FPS, but if I turn it on, it still runs at 30. I don't know if you can play this game at, th at 60, but you no, know, that's something. Uh, one cool thing that you'll see is when I get an achievement, it'll actually have a. Uh, a gigantic pop-up and play the this PlayStation sound effect instead of just the Steam sound effect and the Steam little Steam pop-up. I'm gonna try to go for a lot of the achievements. I want to 100% this game because I played it a lot as a kid, but I know for a fact 100% requires multiple playthroughs. So I don't I don't know what's what's up with that. Also, you can see at the bottom I did pay for this game. I am not a pirate. I am not a pirate. I did pay for this game. What? 409 players in-game on Steam. I didn't know you could see that. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch of other things. I, I haven't gone through everything, but it's like general tweaks and stuff. Um, I don't know how much of them is like... actually gonna improve the game, but... The main thing was, I wanted Japanese voices, so we could see what they were like. Because I'm pretty sure the majority of people have played this game in English. I want the Japanese singing because I like the Japanese versions of songs like um, A Thousand Words and Real Emotion, which we're gonna hear. And I want to play through the game because uh, I never beat it, so I actually don't know how good the game is. Uh, it's one of the games that I know people love the series, but I don't really hear people talk about this game specifically. So I don't actually know how good this game is specifically. I only hear people talk about Final Fantasy X. It's always X-2 they skip out on. And when I say Final Fantasy XII, because I like Final Fantasy XII, people think I'm talking about this game. So it's, it's just, this game's in such a weird spot. Okay, one thing I remember right away is the, the volume levels for this game are complete garbage. You're gonna hear her say you Reapa, which is YRP, and you're barely even gonna be able to hear it over the background sounds. I'm gonna stay a little bit quiet so we can hear the song, because I fucking love the song. Let's see how loud she is. I don't I don't think I tweaked the volume at all, because I'm pretty sure it's just low by default. Daddy. Daddy. Mission's 
This sounds pretty low. And because it's a uh, it's a video and not like the gameplay, I don't think there's much I can do about that. But I also think there's not any ways for me to adjust the volume. I'm pretty sure that's one of the complaints I had with the game. Uh, if I remember right, even though this is a remaster, they didn't really up the graphics too much. That's what, yeah, you can even hear the what can I do for you there was hella low. So we're gonna hear the, the Japanese audio. And one of my favorite songs ever. What can I do for you? What can I do? I love this song so much. But yeah, you can definitely hear the, the volume is pretty damn low. Alright, I'm gonna shut up now. Oh shit! That that intro always gives me goosebumps at the end. I don't know if it's because I just love the song so much. Because I I think it's a really good intro. I think it's really good introducing the characters and what they do. But uh yeah, the CG looks pretty good. I don't think I don't think it's um like upscaled too much. Like I don't think it's as HD as people want it to be, but I also don't think you know it's the exact same as it was back then, but it, it looks pretty damn good. Now I didn't play too much of uh, Final Fantasy 7, but I will say right now I'm not too much of a fan of this game's combat system. This game has uh, active combat. Wait, really? You're gonna heal up after I just attack? This game is active combat. So, even though I'm selecting like what I want to do, the enemies and stuff can still attack me. I'm not really a fan of that type of combat system. I think it's actually a really good combat system. It, um, it introduces a turn-based idea, but also keeps the game active, so it's not like your characters are just standing around not doing anything. But I'm not a fan of it because I'm not... I'm not a person who likes to sit around and um, to sit. I, I, I'm a I'm a type of person who likes to sit around and think. Oh, also, I think I should steal from her. There you go. Steal. Ste steal. Come on, Riku. There you go. I got high potion. We're gonna we're gonna try to do this game uh, very optimally. I don't know if that's a good word. We're not gonna get 100%, but we're gonna play it like we're trying to get 100%. <laughs> it looks so hot. You mean Pain? Or you mean Yuna? Or, or Riku. I, I know everyone loves Riku and her thong. 
So very easy tutorial battle. You can pretty much not lose it. I think right here, actually, uh, if you're trying to go for 100%, there is a thing you have to do. If you want 100%, there is a thing you have to do right here. Yeah, Pain was actually my favorite when I was a kid. It was Pain, you know, then Riku. I don't know who I like more now. I think it's still Pain. No, it's not here. Uh, so if you want 100% this game, you actually can't do it in a single playthrough. You have to have, you have to, I think, play the game two or three times to get 100%. Because um, they're the, the hundred. The way they calculate 100% is not the way it normally is calculated. So, for example, I think it's here. Oh damn it! Okay, but let's talk about this tutorial. The enemies are super, super weak. There's no difficulty setting. But the enemies are so weak that you can see that fire only did 2 damage. You pretty much don't even have to worry about them and you could just mash. This is pretty nice because it means that if you don't know how to play the game, you are still gonna be able to get through it. You don't have to think too much. Is it right here? It might be a little bit ahead. The problem is... The enemies spawn so frequently that um, if you are trying to get this the little bonus thing, which I don't even know if I can do it now, I'm pretty sure I, I have to do it now. If you're trying to get the bonus thing, uh, it just can get pretty annoying. But the bonus thing is a bonus thing, so it's not like it's mandatory. Yeah, right here. You see, there's a fucking Moogle there, right? And if you touch it, you actually heal up. And if you don't touch it, you can't get 100%. So the way the game calculates 100% is very, very strange. Instead of collecting items or watching cutscenes, sometimes you have to do very, very tiny things like that. And it makes this game almost impossible to 100% if you're trying to do it without a tutorial or without a guide. But that's one major complaint about this game. As someone who likes to 100% every game that he is interested in or that he finds uh, very, uh, very special to him, it's pretty messed up that this game you could just kind of fuck yourself over all because the game's just kind of odd. The way it calculates things. Okay, so now that we have a chance to chill, let's go over some of this, this stuff here. So first of all, um, I'm gonna keep Dress Sphere animations to normal because I like watching them transform. This is something I'm definitely gonna change the weight. I don't like... I, I personally don't like the combat system in this game because I'm someone who likes to sit and think about my next move. But I like the idea of it, where it's a turn-based game, but it's not completely turn-based. It's um, it's still very active. Like, you, you, have to pay, you have to pay active attention to what's happening. If you put it on weight, though, it's not like in Final Fantasy XII. In Final Fantasy XII, the difference between action and weight is, when you bring up your menu, everything pauses. So it gives you time to think. And you can close your menu at any time you want to. So you can, at any point in the game, you can open up your menu, figure out what's happening, and then do what you, what you, what you want to do. In this game, weight only activates during certain things. So I think it's, um, I think it's when I target an enemy, then it will go into weight, which means no one's ATV will build up anymore. And when, uh, when the dress sphere animations are going off, but I think if I'm selecting skills and stuff, it's still gonna be active. This game's groovy. This game has a pretty nice soundtrack from what I remember. ATB speed. Um, I guess we could keep it at fast to keep the game moving. No, you know, let's just keep it normal. Last uh, FF game you played was 13 and it was great. Person loved the active battle system. How do you feel about the game's linearity? Because that's what everyone complained about when it came to 13. I haven't played 13, so I can't say much about it. I've only played one part of it because my girlfriend at the time was stuck. So I don't know what to say. Cursor memory, um, I think we're gonna keep it at default for now. Vibration off because I hate vibration. Help, we'll leave it on. I think help, what it does for this game, is it just explains what attacks do. We have to have subtitles on because we're playing in, um, in Japanese. One thing that's interesting is you could play with subtitled names on. So if you want, like, if you don't care about who's saying the words, or if you already know who's gonna say all the words, 
I can turn that off. It's a weird thing to talk. Yo, don't mind the linearity. Character interactions were more important to you. The only thing I know about 13 is everyone complained about how linear it is. That's the only thing I knew about it. Oh, uh, they also start you off with some good items. 10 potions, which heal more HP than I have currently. Yeah, they give you a high potion, which is fucking crazy. But you can like keep that or sell it. They give you revives in case. And um, that's kind of it. There's not really too much else to say about the beginning of the game. I think the beginning of the game was uh, pretty pretty well done though. It it definitely like made me like really interested in playing the game. So just a really nice song in English or Japanese is a pretty nice song. I just prefer it in um, I just prefer it in Japanese I guess. I think it I don't know something about it, I just prefer it in Japanese. You know I do listen to both versions. Uh, but it, it it introduces all three characters while showing off that they are not normal girls. They are kick ass. Riku says YRP or Uipa in, in position, so you know that they're planning something. You know she says in position is showtime. You know that they they aren't just there for the show. You know that they're doing something crazy. Can't handle this groove. Yeah, this this music is pretty nice. The character designs too. Um, they're all very unique. They all three girls stand out in their own way. We have the we have the more dark, gothy girl, goth-like girl, Kane. We have the very skimpy and fan servicey girl Riku, who for some reason was uh, very flat and very clothed in the first game, and then she turned into this. I really want to know what happened in between games. Did she just lose her virginity or something and decide that she wanted to be more uh, be more free? Who knows. And we saw a little bit of the third one, but we're gonna see a little bit more of her. Um, I don't really like her outfit too much. I think it's a little bit too busy. I feel like you're gonna love this playthrough. Mission complete. See, the facial expressions are actually pretty animated, too. It's not, it's not as, like, plain as some of the uh, more anime games. One thing that's weird is how... I forgot his name. I didn't read his name, but that guy, he clearly had shot twice. But for some reason, there were no bullet sound effects. And also, no bullets came out of his guns, even though he had an animation of shooting twice. I think if, uh, if I'm playing Japanese, does it say Yuripa? Yeah, it says Yuripa because I'm in Japanese. So I'm pretty sure in English it says YRP, but in Japanese it will say Yuripa. Not enough art of pain. Yeah, I don't think she's that popular. So, uh, interesting thing about this fight right here, even though it's still a tutorial fight, you can actually steal accessories from these guys. It's kind of interesting. So technically, if you don't steal accessories from these guys, you are already a little bit, a little bit off compared to what you would be normally. But uh, this fight, this fight's super simple. Even though it's a tutorial fight and it looks like it might be kind of scary, you could get through it just by mashing. Just by mashing. Yeah, Yuna was in um, was in ten. Y Riku was also in ten, and Pain wasn't. I think she, I think they all, she actually uh, talks about. How she met Pain later on in her journey. It's a very easy battle, but one thing that's interesting about it is how you have a chance of missing out on the accessories they get as a steal. So one thing that's actually kind of doing me kind of funny is usually when you play a Japanese game in English, the, the lip syncing is weird. But we're playing an English game in Japanese, so the lip syncing is going to be weird. <laughs> so right here, um, I think. I, think, I don't think it goes into active, but right here they're going to teach me the, the grid system. So now it's going to go into wait mode because um, something's going on. 
So you can actually see at the top right, it's it's on wait. So now all all the people are just gonna sit around and not do anything. I want to keep it like that. I don't think it's like that. It's not like that by default. But um, because I freak out a lot. Oh, there you go. Okay, I couldn't steal anything. So you can see that um, I'm selecting my attack now, and it goes into wait mode. So this will give me time to like think, and it'll also give me time to chat. So that's why I wanted to do this. Normally, even if you're selecting an ability, the enemy will still just do whatever they want, and your your bars will still build up. However fast they normally build up, you can see all the bars are staying empty. Yeah, this is uh, this will give us some time. Yeah, the intro of the game is very confusing because of the double unit thing, but they explain it. Kind of quickly, I guess, but also in a weird way. You see that uh, she LeBlanc had something called a dress sphere, which I then used on Yuna to then turn Yuna into the type of character that LeBlanc was. However, um, other characters can use the dress sphere and they don't turn into Yuna or turn into whatever character. They instead change outfit to suit the dress sphere but don't completely change so I don't know how this this interaction worked out I don't know if um, you could choose to become the, the person entirely or something like that I don't really understand how it works uh, I'm, ve I'm very confused I don't really know how to explain it but we'll get more more information on the dress spheres after a while uh, songstress one thing that's kind of interesting is the game starts off with three with three characters and four classes So you actually have a little bit of customization to do right at the start of the game You have four classes and three characters, so you don't always have to do Even the characters can't handle the grooves. I know everyone's like dancing along and stuff except for pain. Pain's too chill But um, because of the the four classes you actually have a lot of customization to do right at the start Pain is a warrior. She's very physically defensive and offensive. Riku is soup is a thief. She's super weak, but I can steal items from people. And bosses have special items, so I probably am gonna keep her as a thief. Yuna originally is a gunner, but you don't get to see her with guns that much because they want you to transform into Songstress, 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 which is a, a debuffer. Songstress I don't like. I don't like it. Um, it debuffs, but it's it's just a very slow class. You'll see that as soon as they do the darkness dance, she's just gonna sit around and not do anything. Because she's too busy dancing and singing. There you go, got it. Okay, so we got all three of the, the accessories at the start of the game. So now we're automatically gonna be slightly better than people who don't get the stuff at the beginning of the game. I don't even think uh, most Final Fantasy games are even in the same, like, timeline or in the same universe. That's one of the reasons why I want to play this game. Because I don't know, I don't really understand how it's supposed to link to the other, to the Final Fantasy X. Except for Yuna being in the same world and uh, in the story she, she's kind of looking for, in the story she's kind of looking for, uh, Titus. 10 and 12? 10 and 12 aren't the same universe. They're the same universe, but different, like, locations? I'm pretty sure it's only 10 and 10 2 that, um, that are in the same place. They share the same characters. Not, not 12. This this is not this is not twelve. This is ten two. It's not twelve. Twelve is the one with Vaughn, Bosch, Pinello, uh, Ash, all of them. Yeah, that that's that's one thing that annoys me about this game is how it confuses people. Like I said, uh, <laughs> you feel silly. Like I said before, when I say twelve, people think I mean this game. But it's not 12, it's 10-2. You can actually see at the bottom. It's X-2, not 12. It's very confusing. I don't know why they did it like that. 
I think it's because it's the sequel to 10, but it's not quite 11, because I think every game they want it to be in a different universe. So the sequel games, they put a 2, but I feel like there's no other sequel games, so this game's in a very weird spot, so that's another reason why I want to play it. It's in a very odd spot. Lightning recently met Young Noctis. So I guess 12, I, no 13, I guess 13 and 15 are kind of in the same world then? Oh, this Dissidia is, uh, Dissidia is something else. Dissidia is, uh, like all the games in one world, but also not really. Dissidia is like, Dissidia is like Smash Bros. That's what it is. It's like Smash Bros. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. I I have uh, I have the city on PSP. There's actually two versions of it, and there's a new the city called like NT or something, NTX, NT, and the city is pretty much Smash Bros. It's where all the characters in the series meet up, but they don't meet up because because they're in the same world. I think they they like. They like cross universes? I don't I don't know. I this story is very diff this story is very weird. Um, one thing that's strange about the tutorial actually, you'll see right here, Yuna is level 2, Riku and Pain are level 3. For some reason, this game, the characters are not evenly leveled. In fact, you will see that the next level up occurs in 10, or in a 24 experience for Riku, and 35 for Pain. It's a very strange idea. I don't know why they did it like that. Maybe because they wanted some characters to be stronger than others at certain points? I'm not really sure. But they gave you a fuck ton of items by the time you finish the tutorial, so that's pretty cool. Is this an FF that has a infamous shitty laugh? That's 10. 10 has the shitty laugh. Have you not played too many Final Fantasy games, Yuki? <laughs> I think we're gonna get a flashback to it, actually. So here they explain the garment grid a little bit, but it's still very odd. ボクまだ子供だし。ユナのダンス、俺も見たい。高いよ。そうなのか。本気。よ、自慢のか。よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、よ、
It's free? Then I, just, I didn't have a way to play it. That's what happened. It's a PC game, right? I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure uh, when it was popular, I just didn't have a, a good PC. So I just never played it. For a very, very, very long time, I did not have a PC that was good for gaming. I could only play like some MMOs. You can pick up enemy weapons and use them, but when you use them, your fighting style changes. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, hell yeah, we get a bestiary. Dossiers. I think this is like, um, yeah, I could read about different characters and stuff. So you can see, uh, the High Summoner who defeated Sin two years ago and brought the Eternal Calm. So this game takes place two years after the, uh, X, uh, two years after 10. I was gonna say X for some reason. It happens two years after 10 and you can find that out right at the start of the game, so that's pretty cool. If you're wondering, like, how, why does Yuna look like this? Why she look older? Why is she wearing this outfit instead of her summoner outfit? Is she still a summoner? You, you figure out, it out right here. The discovery of a certain sphere led her to flee her island home and begin a personal journey. So you even hear why she's on this weird journey with all these different people. Mission Stato! An Albed girl who was once Yuna's guardian, which is true. It was Riku who dragged Yuna outside of her stable. Stable but uneventful existence in a set in a besaid. So Riku helped uh, help Yuna get to where uh, she is now, I guess? Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting is you can read about the characters here. There's actually two pages, so it looks like there's going to be quite a bit of characters. But... Um, when you first talk to a character, when we first talk to Shinra, you know, actually explained a little bit about the character. And we'll see right here when I talk to Pain. Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。Pain。
if you don't play the other game, but it, that kind of makes sense because it's a sequel, right? Yeah. It's gonna be unique for you because they haven't played it in 10 years. I haven't even beat the game before. So half of this game is gonna be pretty unique to me. Learning Albed. Brother and all Albed. All Albed, what the fuck? And the Albed race speak their own uh, unique language. Which is a very simple language. You just you just take some letters and swap them with others. And then you're done. Hino has managed to pick up a little Albed during her travels with the Gullwings. It's kind of interesting. Um, you can actually see some words she knows, but she doesn't know which letters replace what. She just knows certain words. So that's an interesting way to like teach you a little bit of Albed without like spoiling how the language is um, written out. I still want to buy this already. But if you buy it, um, the remastered version comes with both 10 and 10 too. So if you buy it like, on sale like I did, I bought it for 20 bucks. So both I got both games for ten dollars, pretty much. It's a, it's a pretty good deal, especially if you like both of the games. Um, she still has a long way to go. Go digging for Albed primers in the desert that we don't know about yet. Expose yourself to the language as much as possible, and you'll be proficient in no time. Uh, if you want to learn like what characters are saying throughout the game, you could like beat the game, have primers on you, and then play through the game on New Game Plus, and then you could then understand what all the characters are saying. You could also do that in two, or not not two in the first game. So that's a pretty cool idea. You go through the game, you don't really understand what characters are saying, but maybe understand based on the situation. Then you go into New Game Plus, and you can fully understand them. And if you cared enough, like some of the Star Trek fans out there, you could just learn the language yourself. So now we got two primers already, three primers, four primers, four primers, so we know four letters now. And we get a bonus thing that's for this version of the game. So I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy X and X2 have international versions. Uh, for example, in X, there's a boss called Penance. It was the super final boss in that game. The version I played as a kid did not have that boss. The PAL version, or the international versions, had that boss. This game, and the remastered 10, also, uh, is all based on the international version. So normally you don't get this, but we get it. So now we start the game with five classes instead of three. Or four. Normally we start with four, now we have five. And if we, if we wanted to, we could actually switch our classes around right now, but Festivalis is kind of broken. Okay, so I guess we could... Times it. We could explain a little bit about this. I might go for like... No, it's Tuesday. I can't, I can't go for too long. Maybe we'll go for like an extra 30 minutes. Who knows? Um, menu's a little bit... A little bit of... It's just... It's okay. It's a little bit kind of dull. I don't like the color scheme of it. But the light, the lighting effect is kind of interesting. You see, as you move around, like the lighting where your cursor is moves around, and it actually moves shadows around all over the place. It's a nice way to make the, it's a nice way to make the menu look more alive. But the menu itself, I don't like the color scheme of it. It's just kind of, I don't know, it looks gross. So items, we see that you start with a lot of items. This game, this game starts off pretty easy. You have no white magic, because we don't have the white mage class. When you equip stuff, you can equip a garment grid, which you then can choose different classes based on what's on the grid. You then choose a class. The classes you choose are based on the grid. One thing that I really like about the classes in this game, in, um, in some of the game, in some RPGs, your base stats are based on the class you are when you level up, like in Final Fantasy Tactics. For this game, your stats will change based on whatever your your current class is. You see some classes, for example, Songstress, just very low stats in general. When I switch to Thief, all my stats go up pretty much except for MP and Magic, because overall it is just a better class. But then you can also see like your attacks change and stuff. So if I'm a warrior, I get swordplay. If I'm a Songstress, I don't even get to attack, I only have dance. If I'm, if I'm a gunner, I have a happy trigger. If I'm a thief, I can steal. We're gonna switch it to gunner. Because I like her as a gunner more. 
We have three accessories at the start because I stole them from the bosses at the start of the game. And if you look, these are actually not bad items. Silver glasses prevents us from being blinded and it gives us a little bit of defense and magic defense. One, uh, one complaint I have about a lot of RPGs is when you equip an item and it shows you that your stat increases. But it doesn't show you what your stat was previously. So we can see that we went from 13 to 17 if we switch like this. But when I'm highlighting this, it doesn't say 13 and then hyphen 17. So I know like, okay, I went from 13 to 17. I wish more games did that just so you could see like... Okay, this increases my stats. But it actually only increases by one. So it's not that worth it compared to this other item, which does this effect. This item only increases my stats. It doesn't give me a bonus effect. Wish more games just had you sh had uh, had it show like you get this this much of an increase. We get a iron bangle, very nice at the start, 20% HP. That's gonna be good no matter what, pretty much. And then you get 40 40% MP, very big number. Sadly, we don't have that much MP, but depending on who I put that on, that could be pretty useful. Uh, Yuna has the least amount of HP on everyone. So let's actually put this on her. And Riku has the least amount of defense, so let's put this on her. I don't know who I'm going to use most MP for, to be honest. Probably you. The Garment Grids. Uh, they let you know who has a Garment Grid equipped, so just in case you accidentally unequip a class that someone's using, then, um, yeah, you, you could, like, fuck yourself over. So Gunner, use a gun to fire enemies from afar. I don't really think from afar matters. I don't think there's flying uh, flying status in this game. Unlike 10. Uh, fight with powerful sword attacks and high defense. Uh, warriors also have a lot of like status breaks and stuff. It would be nice if they said that too. Aid allies by singing and dancing your way to victory. See, um, some of these descriptions, I guess they're going for more fun than they are for descriptions. Songstress is very debuff heavy, and I think a little bit buffs, but I think it's mostly debuffs. Steal items, skill, and just about anything with Flim Flam. Flim Flam is a weird word. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. These should be self-explanatory already. Every day is a festival. Abilities vary by character. See, this is like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? We're gonna put that on, but Festivalist is kind of OP, so we're probably not gonna use it. Abilities in this game are pretty interesting, and I kind of like how they work, but also don't like how they work. So the way they work is, you can see a percentage, that's how many abilities you have in that class. 5% of the abilities, 6% of the abilities, so on. So what you do to learn attacks is, you have to pick one of these. So for example, um, damage one enemy, magic damage on an enemy, that seems pretty good. Critically damage one enemy. Dark proof, I could just not be blinded. You know, that seems pretty good. So then what you do is, you have to select it. Will learn dark proof. Now I pretty much have to just fight things until the number goes up to 30. I don't know exactly how it builds up. I think it's based on how many enemies you attack. Because when you kill enemies and when you attack them, sometimes you just, all of a sudden it goes, Hey, by the way, you learned something. And then, whenever you learn an ability, you tend to gain the thing that's next to it. So if I learn Pot Shot, I then can gain whatever's here. And if I learn this, I could then get whatever's here. It's just kind of like, eh. Kind of, it's kind of all over the place. Check your notification page on Discord and the notification on the stream. There's a thumbnail and gameplay of Tokyo as an ad. You excuse me? What the fuck? Excuse me? <laughs> Does it make sense? Uh, one thing that's weird about this system, when you when you learn an ability, you automatically start learning the next one. So that's cool because you don't accidentally um, you don't accidentally like waste your time. For example, like if I already learned dark proof and it was still selected, then I'm just wasting time when it comes to my battle. So that's pretty cool. But it does also mean that um, like a after you learn an ability. You Probably should check your menu and make sure you're learning things you actually want to learn. So let's go to every character and let's make sure we're learning things we want to learn. Steal Gill, Inflict Stop, Improves auto Odds of Stealing, Flee. I definitely want Flee. You know what? Actually, we're probably not going to flee from battles. I try to, try to never run from a battle if I can when I play an RPG. Let's go for Item Hunter. 
proves drops of it proves uh odds of dropping an item. Definitely want that. Pain is pain is an interesting one. Or warriors in general. Warriors can learn um, a whole bunch of stuff. They can learn elemental damage. Sadly, even though they can all be learned at the very start, uh, you automatically already you're, you're already on your way to learning flame tongue. Because that's the one that starts with well actually you start with sentinel. And then you learn it during the tutorial, and then it goes to Fling Tongue. But, um... You don't really know which one you want to learn first, unless you play the game already. Because, you know, elements, elemental attacks are only good on things that are weak to the element. But I think we're just gonna stick with... Actually, I, I don't want this. Pass for tech when low HP? Probably want that. I'm pretty sure these abilities only work if you are that class. So it's not like I can learn this and then switch my class and then still have it. I'm pretty sure... If I learn it with this class, I can only get this as this class. Oh yeah, we can also- I forgot about that. So, um... I'm probably not gonna use Songstress ever. But at the top, you can actually see the character's outfit change, depending on the class you're currently wearing. Sadly, there's no full, uh, full view of the person, because some of the outfits are actually pretty cool. So you don't know how these characters look until you switch to it and then go into battle. It's, it's a shame that you can't see the full outfit. But a uh, Festivalist, you get if you're playing this version of the game, or the international version. This thing's makes- this thing's just very strange. Um... Oh, you can't see here. But the way Festivalist works is, when you cast magic... Normally in Final Fantasy games, you have... Like, for example, Fire, Fire Ra, Fire Ga, and then Fire Ja. And then... Depending on if it's a, uh, da, or ja is depending on the strength of the stuff. But Festivalist is you throw your slipper or your sandal. And then depending on how your sandal lands, you'll do a different version of the attack. So sometimes, like what happened to me when I was trying to play this game recently. Not recently, but a couple months ago. Actually, I think my save file is still here. Let's see what percentage I was at. But uh, when you save, you heal up and stuff, and you can save the game or whatnot. Yeah, 17% th uh, done in the game, and almost 17 hours played. New save file. So when I was doing this save file, um, I accidentally one-shot the next boss that we're gonna fight later. I accidentally one-shot him, because I I was using Festivalist, and then I got fired Ga, and then he just died in one shot. So we're probably not going to use Festivalist, but we might put it on just to look at it. I forgot how to progress. Oh yeah, yeah, still analyzing. What we have to do is, um... What we actually have to do is, uh... Just explore a little bit. We can go to the deck, cabin, engine room. I don't think there's any reason to go to the engine room or the deck. Engine room might have an item to pick up, actually. You could check that later. But the cabin, we can, uh, we can actually shop. And there's actually a new character in here. I don't think you see these guys in Final Fantasy X. Hyperozoku <laughs> He's, he's a Hypello. I don't think Hypellos are in the, uh, in 10. So right away, you can actually see, um... But a few different items you can pick up right at the start. You get a couple curatives if you're afraid of something. Like, for example, I'm afraid of poison. So we're probably gonna buy a couple of these. Also afraid of Petrify. First, itchy and pointless. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know if they're even going to explain status effects. They don't tend to explain them in Final Fantasy games. You just have to figure them out yourself. But, uh, I think... No. Accessories? No, the, the stuff you get at this beginning of the game doesn't even sell that well. So this stuff is, uh, mostly just for show or to let you know that accessories exist. Because if you don't steal from the bosses in the tutorial, you actually don't get any accessories. So I'm a little bit ahead of the game right now. One thing I like to do, though... Let's sleep. 
I don't know what sleeping does, to be honest. But I like to do it because um, you'll see that for some reason these characters not only sleep with their clothes on, but she also sleeps with her boots on. Is that like an American thing or something? Who sleeps with shoes on? It would have been kind of cool if there was some fan service where you saw her in like her PJs or something. But you know, maybe that's a little bit too much work or something. Oh, you don't want to jump down? I know you can jump down here. Do you not want to jump down? How do I jump? Maybe, maybe they have to teach me how to do it first. But I know you can jump down from there. Um, if I remember right, to actually progress the game, this is a little bit confusing. They don't really explain it, I guess. You just kind of, they go, you talk to the people up above and then they just say, I'm still examining or I'm still analyzing. So you just sit around like, okay, what do I do? So you come down here and then when you try to leave, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, just all of a sudden, there's something to do. So it's a, it's a little bit weird. They go, oh, there's something. Oh yeah, it's we're not actually done. So go do something else. And then all of a sudden, boom. That part I really like. I like how um, the characters aren't just standing around doing nothing. You actually see like Riku run up. Under when we spawn some like G Fuel. I wonder how G Fuel tastes. Because I know Felix, I know PewDiePie loves that stuff, man. He loves it so much he eats the powder. I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> Okay, so sadly, um, we actually can't examine this uh, menu screen too much. It really sucks that right away you're just forced to go to wherever. But um, it's still kind of the tutorial, so I guess it's not that bad. But there are, there's some information here, at least. You can see there's a whole bunch of different locations right at the start of the game. You can see what chapter you're on, you can see how much of the percent of the game you're completed. That's a little bit of a... of a... What's the word? It's a little bit of a lie. That's not a good word, but it's a little bit of a lie. To get 100% of the game, you don't just collect all the items or fight all the bosses. You have to do very minor things. Like, for example, during a certain chapter, you talk to a certain character to get certain dialogue, and that gives you 1%. So, for example, we actually would be at 2% right now instead of 3%. But, because during the tutorial, I found a Moogle chilling in the corner and talked to it. We're actually at 3% instead of 2%. Little things like that um, makes the percentage of completion just very strange. I'm pretty sure you cannot 100% the game in a single playthrough. Um, other things you could look at, you know, you can look at the full list of things. You can see at the bottom, there's a difficulty bar, which at the moment we don't know what that means. We don't know what 3 star easy slash um, in the middle of easy and hard. We don't really know what that means. But we can also see uh, what our mission is, so you know why you're going to wherever place you're going. We're getting spear waves from the top of Sacred Mountain Gagazette. Go get that treasure spear, Gullwings. Mount Gagazette's in Final Fantasy X, but it actually looks quite different when you play it here. <laughs> Sadly, we're not going to play most most of this area because my throat's hurting and uh, it's almost 10 o'clock. I always thought this part was kind of weird. So you get a nice view of the area. First of all, why did we land in such a weird spot? But also, these girls suck at pulling Yuna up. Look at these girls struggle.
Man, they struggled so hard. <sighs> Drink Capri Sun and eat some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle... Turtle Pies? Excuse me? Is that what you used to do back in the day and that's why you want to do that now? What's it you and Capri Sun, Yuki? You really like Capri Sun, it seems like. Okay, so I think if, um, I think if you miss any treasures here, you actually, like, actually miss them. Um, I'm pretty sure this game does have missables. In fact, it has a lot of missables, and this area is one of them. So there are treasures you might have seen down there. Um, we're gonna try to get everything, but there's a chance we will miss something and we might have to reset. But I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't really care. Reset is a direct gateway to your childhood with each sip. <laughs> I think I drank more Kool-Aid than I did Capri Sun. I think Kool-Aid was cheaper where I was. It was very cheap. Jumping tutorial. This game does have a little bit of platforming, but the platforming is very simple. It has different flavors. Cherry, watermelon, wild berry, wild raspberry, and blueberry. I am definitely into the berries, I will say that. But I, I think I, I was a Kool-Aid drinker, not a Capri Sun drinker. I'm pretty sure Capri Sun was more expensive, which is why we never drank it. Uh, jumping in this game is pretty easy, because you don't even need to press circle. You just kind of have to hold the button now. Press and hold circle while uh, approaching a chasm to leap across. If you fail to press it, you will lose your balance, so be careful. You don't need to press it though, you just hold the, down the button, and then you just automatically jump. So I don't know what to talk about there. Hold to climb over ledges, so you don't you don't need to press to climb up. You could just hold down the button and then walk up to it. It makes platforming pretty easy. I will say the jumping animation is very very odd. Um, it seems very like quick. It doesn't seem like a real jump. In certain places, not pressing circle will allow you to jump down to the ledge below. Ever try hickory sticks? I used to eat a lot of, um, like, Lunchables. I used to eat a lot of Lunchables, and Hickory Sticks were one of the one of the snacks that were in the Lunchables. I definitely loved them. So they actually tell you right here that sometimes you shouldn't jump. I kind of wish they didn't tell you that. They just let you discover it yourself. But, um, you know, tutorial. It's, it's, not, it's not that bad if they tell you it. Big Turk? Is that the name of... Is that the name of a Lunchable? Big Turk? Yellow Ring. Uh, accessories in this game are very strange. Canadian snacks? I don't actually know, like, what... Uh, which of my things are Canadian-specific, to be honest. I don't know what's a, what's uh, what's American, and what's Canadian specific. So accessories in this game are pretty cool because this accessory has lightning damage, which is just you know okay, cool. It gives you some magic, but it also lets you cast thunder. So if you look at the menu, it actually gives you black magic. So you can use black magic and not be a black mage. It's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, this matters more if you're like a class that is proficient in magic. Or like you have support abilities on everyone, but it's a pretty cool thing to do. Uh, thing to do. Oh wow, Yuna couldn't even jump properly. Go girls. We're gonna just get to the first save point, which is like right down here. Prefer red or red mage? I actually really like the red mage. In Final Fantasy One, I, I played the 20 year anniversary edition. My team was four red mages. I really like Red Mage. I, I like characters who are either specialized in magic or um, can do both. Where it's like a, a spell sword. In fact, we might play... We can uh, get a magic class. We could get two magic classes, I think, very early on. And we might do that. We can get a psychic, if you know what you're doing. You could get that. You could get a gun mage, which is actually very important to getting 100% if I am correct. And I think you could get Black Mage kind of early. 
So we might just play around with a magic team or something. I don't know how much your team composition really matters in this game. All I know is the reason there's two reasons I did not beat this game as a kid. Uh, the first one was sometimes I would get to a boss and I just could not beat them. Uh, so I would have to grind. And I think I actually got to a point where I wasn't able to grind. Like I locked myself out of... I like saved in, the, in an area where there was a boss but there were no enemies to kill. Hopefully you don't run into that situation. And the other one was I I uh, I was bored and was skipping dialogue. And then they told me to go do something and then didn't figure out what I had to do. But I just could not complete the game because I just skipped the dialogue. Hopefully that doesn't happen. We're older now. We're like 10 years older than what we were back then. I'm hopefully not going to delete this save file because this save file uh, has a lot of things in it that we're probably not going to do. But we're going to do a couple interesting things to just kind of show them off and also talk about it. Like getting mascots in chapter 1. Or is it chapter 2? Pretty sure it's chapter 1 you can get a mascot which is the best rescue. But we're gonna, we're gonna stop here for now, because it's already 10 o'clock. My throat is actually really hurting. And tomorrow, we're gonna uh, continue playing this game, because fuck Omega Quintet. Do not play that game unless you are a Massacist. And you have to be a pretty hardcore one. Um. I guess Shofu's on. He's playing, playing Wacky White? Pokemon Wacky White. It's black and white too, but I think it's modded. So, let's just go host him. He's a cool guy. I think he's playing with his friends too. I think they're doing like a challenge run. It's a capital? No, it's a capital. Like always, guys, thanks for hanging out today. You participate in chats. If you chill in the background, either way, I appreciate you. Hope you enjoy the stream. I don't know how long it's going to take to finish this game, but uh, we will do our best. Bye, Yuki. Up and bye. We'll do our best to finish it in a uh, an ordinary amount of time. Hopefully, it doesn't take 60 hours like Tokyo's and Addy. Until then, good night, everyone. Take care, and I hope to see you all next time.